Um, I've been taking apart all my lipo packs that had bad cells and uh, been experimenting with how to get these apart without making a fire. Uh, more on that later, but this is the pack that goes on my Norco. It's uh, 24 cells, 100 volts, and um, I just run a single strain, so it's 5 amp hours. And after one season, um, let me check all of these. All 4.12 volts, except one's 4.11. All exactly 4.12. 4.12 and a few at 4.13. And on this pack, I already know that 4.11, 4.12. 3.23 so all 4.1 volts across the board except one here is at 3.23 um, so there's obviously one bad cell here after sitting all winter long and it was a problem during the season but I still ran with it um, I could still charge the packing series without having to disconnect everything just using three bolt chargers but uh, this cell's got to go for the year so we're going to take all this apart now I've built quite a few packs over the years and um, learned some lessons along the way. When you build a box and it's meant to last forever, uh, servicing it is a real pain in the butt. So this guy here I built with intentions of repairing. Some hot glue and extra tape. And there we have it, one back with the bad cell, and it's on the positive side. Um, first thing you need to do is open this up. Now, I use a blade knife. Obviously, you're working with batteries, and you don't want to puncture one of these foil pouches. All they are um, is a simple, soft, vacuum-sealed pouch, um, and the tabs are at the top. These are soft. You can, They will literally flex. Uh, this is a bad cell, so I, I don't care about bending it, but um, you puncture this with a knife and you're going to have problems. For example, this one here, you can tell, uh, I'm not sure if the video will show that, but there's air inside the cell. It's puffed out a little bit. And I mean, if you severely abuse these cells, they will puff up like balloons and then they can explode and, well, it's just a bad day. We'll not think about that for now. Put this back. Um, Always make sure that you're not wearing jewelry, no watches, rings, or any metal things. Um, on any one of these packs, I can touch these tabs, they're fine with fingers, but if you put something conductive, a piece of metal, a blade, uh, you name it, in those tabs, and you're going to get sparks and a lot of power. Um, it's kind of scary, but these packs here, uh, there's the Turner G label, 5 amp hours each, and uh, there's a sleeve going all the way around the pack. This stuff is pretty tough. Um, you want a blade knife like it, it, you can cut through it but it's pretty hard. Um, I always cut on that surface first. A small nick so you can separate it. And then gently Now the white tape on top here, filament stuff.
All right, so. Three point two three five right here. First cell on the end. So start by getting rid of that piece of paper. Just so we know which one we want to take out. Alright, so we got the pack stripped down and um, I've marked the cell I want to get rid of. I put a piece of tape on top just to protect my fingers. I don't want anything metal when I put it down or for whatever reason. If anything goes flying, at least cover your tabs. Um, using a Dremel with a cutting wheel. I've tried different ways of getting these tabs off including using a soldering iron to melt the pool and then hitting it with a, an air compressor. That was a bad idea because liquid metal goes flying everywhere. Uh, I tried from 10 PSI all the way up to 50 and same result every time. You just get a big spray of metal, so not good. Um, next step was just to cut the tabs literally off the cell. You get rid of the cell anyway. It's no good. It's dead. So even though you cut the tabs off, you'll never use it again anyway. So with the Dremel, be ever so careful. Using a spatula, a nice thin one, gently pry the cells apart. Now you want to be careful. These guys I want to save. I don't care about this one. Um, so I'm taking my time here. There's no hurry. The tape will eventually give way. back and one dead cell okay so uh, one day later got this pack repaired and uh, over here is the cell I replaced uh, the tabs are a bit short but I was able to put enough solder to connect to the circuit board in the front um, right now I'm draining the entire pack using my light bulbs um, just using four bulbs right now I have another um, rack with six more, I can put them all in parallel in. Well, at 100 volts right now I'm drawing 450 watts at 89.9 volts. Which is enough for testing, so um, 3 amp hours in from a full charge, everything's at 3.74, 3.75 Four and five, three point seven everywhere again, all within zero point zero one volt of each other. So we're doing good so far. Um, no heat at all at five amps because these cells are twenty C, and I'm only drawing five amps, which is one C. Um, if all goes well, I'll wrap that up again, put it back on the bike, and I'll be off and running. Okay, so after the test, I've got 4.779 amp hours. Um, all my cells are showing 3.4, and the lowest one is on this pack at 3.2 on cell 1. This guy. So, knowing the lowest capacity cell in my entire pack, as long as I monitor this one cell, I know all my other ones will be above unless another cell goes bad on me. 
So uh, there it is, time to box it back up.